I'm not gonna lie, this is not the most entertaining video you're gonna watch today. When I say it's not the most entertaining video you're gonna watch today, all I mean by that is it's the learning. It's basic learning. It's one of the things that you should learn outside of the pen tool if you're using Adobe Illustrator. Take my advice, take 30 minutes a day and work with the pen tool. Even if you hate it, you don't understand it, you don't know how it works, take a half an hour, work with the pen tool, and in a month, you'll thank me for it. So the shape tool is one of those tools though that you should learn how to use. There's so many different shapes that you can use and it's gonna come in handy no matter what you're making. If you're making brochures, if you're designing logos, if you're doing business cards, shapes are kind of the foundation of a lot of different things that you're gonna end up designing in your career. So let's hop over to Illustrator and I'll show you how the shape tool works. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I'm not gonna cover the lens flare shape tool. I've never used it in over 15 years. So there's other tutorials out there Go watch one of those if you really need to learn how to use the lens flare tool. All right, here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator. To get to your shape tools, you're gonna to find them over in your sidebar. So you can hover over the last tool that you used, which for me was the rectangle. So I'm gonna click and hold to get my little fly out just cause I wanna be able to use this fly out menu and drag this over so we can see everything. You'll notice that this still stays in your taskbar while you can pull this out and work with it. All right, so our basic shapes, we have the rectangle tool, which you'll notice the keyboard shortcut is M. We have a rounded rectangle tool, no keyboard shortcut for this one. We have an ellipse tool or circle tool, which L is the keyboard shortcut. We have the polygon tool. Notice again, no keyboard shortcut for this one. And we have the star tool. And again, no keyboard shortcut. Now, as I mentioned in the intro to this one, I'm not gonna talk about the flare tool. It's something I've never used. I don't use it in any of my vector work. So I don't feel like I'm the right person to be showing you how to use this. If you wanna learn how to use the flare tool, I'm sure there's some amazing tutorials out there on YouTube, on the internet, but it's not this one that you're watching right now. So to start with, we're gonna talk about the rectangle tool. Pretty basic to use. I've got a fill color and a stroke selected, a five point stroke. Click and drag anywhere on your artboard to get the shape that you want. If you want a square, you can hold down shift and drag out and you get a square. You can also hold down option shift and draw your square from the center or just hold down option and draw your rectangle out from the center. Now I've talked about selection tools in a previous video, but I'm gonna cover it again here just real quick anyways because there's some good things to know about the different selection tools that we have and how they function with the shapes. So right now I'm using the selection tool, which is a little black arrow and that's V on your keyboard. And with this one, I can grab a shape. I can resize it by using the little bounding box. I can scale it down. I can hold shift and scale down or up by constraining the proportion of it. I can change the round corners on this. I can click on a single corner and just change that one. And I can even rotate by going on one of the edges of the bounding box. And by holding shift, I can strain the rotation as well. Now, if I wanna make more changes to these rounded corners, the direct selection tool or the little white arrow, keyboard shortcut A, is your better option. With this one, I can actually option click on the various little round buttons here for my round corners, and you can see that it changes them to concave, it changes them to flat, and then it changes them back to round again. And again, I can grab one and just change it. Now this is the reason that I don't use the rounded rectangle tool very often. I prefer to draw a square or a rectangle and make adjustments to it rather than starting out with rounded corners on it. Now the one other way that I can draw a square or a rectangle is just by selecting the tool, so keyboard shortcut M and clicking somewhere on the artboard. From there, I get this little rectangle dialog box and I can put in my width, my height, and constrain proportions on this one. As soon as I click OK, it draws the rectangle for me. Next, we have our rounded rectangle tool, which I just discussed. Again, it works just like the rectangle tool. I click somewhere, I can put in a width, a height, and I can also put on a corner radius here. Our ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, works just like the other ones. 
I can draw an ellipse. If I hold down shift, I get an even circle. Let go. And there I've got my circle. If I wanted an ellipse, I can just do this and I get the ellipse that I want. So one thing you'll notice on the circle is this little tab right here. And what this allows me to do is, is make pie chart type shapes. So I can actually click that and we can do our shape into, let's say there. Now what I could do if I wanted to was just take this, copy it, Command B to paste in back. Let's select a different color. Let's go with pink. And then I'm gonna drag this back up. Paste in back again, because so let's grab one more color. Let's go with uh, green. Move this over. Let's go a little less with that one. And the same thing, I'm gonna go Command B to paste another one in back and we'll go orange. And I'll grab this one more time and we'll just bring it right back up to zero. So there, quick little pie chart in, I mean, under 30 seconds. Of course, you I mean, there's ways to do that inside of Illustrator I'm going to cover in a future video because there are tools here for doing pie charts. But if you just want a kind of a graphical representation of something, this is one way to do it. So next we have our polygon tool. Now, no keyboard shortcut for this. Once again, click and drag out and I can use my up and down arrows to add more sides to this or less sides. So if I need a triangle, there's a triangle. If I need pentagon, there's a pentagon. If I needed a hexagon, right there. Now the one thing with this tool, everything stays constrained to proportions until you let go. So once I let go of this, I can now come in and I can alter this any way that I need to but there's no way to do that. It, it keeps it even, even without holding shift. And if I hold down alt or command or any other modifier keys, it doesn't do anything for me. So draw your shape. If you need to flatten this out a little bit for a pattern or something like that, draw your shape first, then do your squish or your disproportionate adjustment that you want to do. And finally, we have the star tool. Now the star tool is one that, again, you can add more points to it by hitting your up arrow, up arrow and down arrow. I can hold down shift to scale up, scale down. But once I get to the point where I need to be, if I hold down command, it's now gonna allow me to adjust the inner and outer radius. If I let go of shift, it then kind of, you know, just lets me go all wild with it. But if I hold shift down, it keeps that straight. So let's do a little year number one hero badge here. And there we go. Okay, so that's it. Pretty simple, basic shapes, squares, rectangles, ellipse, different options. So for making your stars, holding down command will allow you to adjust your inner diameter once you've got that outer diameter done. You can use the arrow keys to go up or down for the number of sides on your polygon or the number of points on your stars. All right, designers, that's it for this one. Pretty basic. I hope you at least pick something up though. I gotta get back to work once again, just like I always do. So get out there and design something and I'll see you in the next video, which is gonna be tomorrow, in case you haven't caught on to that yet. This is a daily thing for now. Yeah, I work my eight hour day job. I come home, shoot this, edit this, and I upload this the next day. So I hope they're helping.